Hi everyone, it's Stephanie back with another spinning video. Today what I thought I would do, I'm on my match list again, and I purchased some really unique luxury fiber when I was on a little vacation with my girlfriends in Tennessee. Um, they have a little spinning shop in Gatlinburg. I'm the only fiber enthusiast in my group of girlfriends, so they tolerate me stopping by every year when we do this. And I thought I would share spinning this with you. I had to treat myself to this fiber. Um, first of all, before I get into the fiber, let me tell you where this is from because um, I like to share my sources so that you all know where you can get good quality stuff. It is the Smoking Mountain Spinnery and it's in Gatlinburg, Tennessee. If you're in Gatlinburg, stop in. They've got all kinds of stuff. They've got yarns. They've got a whole cabinet full of fiber, different fibers. Um, they've got weaving, they do spinning. They've got spinning wheels you can test out. Um, I tested out, um, oh, good grief. Who does the Aura? Can't think of it right now. They do the rose, the Aura. Um, it will come to me halfway through this video and then when I remember, I know you all are shouting the name at me, Maj Majacraft, of course, Majacraft Aura. I tried it out there and I still like it. Um, maybe it's on my wish list of wheels for the future, but that's a whole other, a whole other um, video. But anyway, this, look at this fiber. Look at that. I, I love, I can see the shine on on the camera even without my glasses on. Anyway, this is four ounces of camel and silk. And you all, it is, it's softer than Angora. Um, it does not look like, I don't know if you can see the little fuzzies here. Yeah, there we go. There is not much twist at all. Um, or not much twist, oh my goodness. Um, not much crimp. It's very, very much a straight fiber. You see that? So what that means is this spun directly from this top here. This is not going to have a lot of elasticity, so you would not want to make something out of it that needs to retain its shape. This is something that might end up stretching out, so you would not want to make a hat or gloves or anything. This would be more to make a shawl or something where retaining its shape doesn't matter. One thing I am finding is it's very, very flyaway. That's very similar to Angora. But anyway, I just wanted to share this with you. I've never spun this fiber before. I can tell that it probably would be good to have a little spray bottle of water to mist on here so that um, it's not quite as flyaway or to have a little bit of fabric softener. Maybe I've done that before also, but I don't have that right now. So we're just gonna spin as is. So I'm gonna get my wheel set up and we will start spinning. Okay, so I'm back. I have my wheel set up and I'm ready to go. I have um, my match list set on the double drive system, which means, let me turn this so that you can see it, which means that um, I have my bobbin on the small whirl here. There is, there's a brake band going, or the drive band is going over both the bobbin and the flyer. On the flyer, I have the band over a larger whirl, and on the bobbin, I have it over a smaller whirl, okay? So that's how I have it set up. I have my leader ready to go, sort of on, doing this and um, before I get started I wanted to explain a few things I'm going to first try to spin this without dividing it without dividing the top I'm going to try to spin it the way that I normally would um, merino or anything else it might not work um, I'll try to just pull out little bits for, and go from left to right and then right to left and keep going back and forth like that it might not work like that um, I probably, I think I mentioned before, I probably should have some water to spray on this to keep the flyaway things down, but I don't have that right now, so we'll just have to make do. And, um, I think that's it. So, oh, staple length. Let me pull out a bit and choose staple length. 
It looks like the staple length is probably, you see that, probably about hmm, two, three inches, okay? So already I can tell you this is probably going to be a, a little bit more difficult than I'm used to. I am not pre-drafting or anything like that. Um, if I feel like I have to pre-draft, I'll just stop and go back to the beginning. That's the great thing about spinning. You don't have to be perfect. So we're going to take our fiber and we are going to put it through our leader. I don't have all the junk off of it, but we'll be fine. At least that's what I say. Now, famous last words. Remember, I always start when I spin my single, I like to go clockwise and I am attempting to slow down my my treadling because like I mentioned I'm really used to treadling on my echo which I have to go faster for and that's not the case here I do not have to go faster here so I'm slowing down I'm doing my my method where I move the thumb of my right hand across the top to kind of act as a, a breaking system here for the fiber that's in my hand. And my left hand is acting as sort of quality control. I'm just adjusting my uptake here because I felt like it was coming out of my hands a little bit too fast. If this was something I was familiar with, say merino, I would leave it at that higher uptake because I would be spinning very fast and be used to it. Right now, I'm just taking my time. This is a new fiber, new to me, and it is very, very slippery. I will mention that it spins fine, beautifully. I don't know if you can, well, it's kind of flesh colored. Let's see if you can see it against my jeans there. It spins like a dream. It's just very slippery. That's the issue I'm finding with it. So I'm going to even adjust my tension even more. There we go. Because I was getting a little bit too thin. So what I'm finding is that for this initial spin, I might go ahead and split this in half because it is so slippery that trying to go across the top, see, I've ended up, it's so thin, it's almost like a thread here, and I don't want that. So what I'll probably do, let me try it now and see if it works better. I'm just going to split this like that, and it comes apart beautifully. I figured it would, and this should make it a little bit more manageable. So what I'm going to do here to join, we'll, this will be a good test, see how it joins, okay? I'm going to undo some of the twist there. See how oh, this is a little bit easier or a little bit fluffier. Then I'm going to pull out the part where I have untwisted the, the twist. I'm going to take my unspun fiber and um, sort of lay it on top of the spun fiber. Wait till those bits catch, then lay it down and start just moving my hand back. And you'll see it creates a seamless join. This is a lot easier now that I've split it. I could probably split it even further, but um, it's okay. It's, it's still, it's wanting to fall right out of my hands. It's so light. So I could probably split it even further because it's ending up spinning up a little bit more fine than I wanted, but we'll just see. Let me spin a little bit more, see if I can get more control, lighten, easing up the tension again. There we go. Maybe we've hit our sweet spot there, tension-wise. Okay, yeah, because I didn't want it quite as thin as I did before. And that's the thing with spinning a new fiber or a new to you fiber. You have to learn what works best for you. Some of you might be used to spinning pure silk and you've got that tension 
cranked up as high as it can go so it's just flying out of your fingers. I do spin a lot of fine fibers like angora and alpaca, but I'm telling you something, this camel and silk is much trickier than either of those. And so I'm just having to take my time until I develop the muscle memory that's required to spin this fine of a fiber. As you'll see, I'm making much smaller movements than I normally do when I spin. Um, and I'm learning, I'm sort of talking myself through this the same way that I'm talking to you all through it, because this is a learning process for me also. When I started spinning, I would have just about died at the thought of buying such an expensive fiber. This was um, $38, so yes, very expensive. It's like I said, it's a luxury fiber. This is not what I typically spin. Um, and when I started spinning, I would have been really just horrified at the thought of not knowing exactly what I was doing when I started spinning this fiber because it is so expensive. But how am I ever going to learn if I don't just jump in and get started? So I figure for a once a year purchase, you know, it's not like every day I am spinning camel and silk. So I think it's okay. How else are we going to learn if we don't just jump in there and give it a shot? I'm starting to get the hang of it now. I am working a lot more with this hand that I'm holding the fiber with than I normally do. Let me see if I can sort of hold it up and show you even more. So I'm also working with my hands closer together than normal. So see, I'm picking my thumb up with my, my right hand here. I'm picking my thumb up almost every time. I'm gonna try and hold it so you can see more. Normally, I would never have my hands this close together, but this is definitely a fiber that will pull right out of your hands if you're not careful with it. So I'm just taking it slow and easy. And now that I've split this top in half and I have relaxed my tension, now I'm gonna go down to my hands, they're normal position for me. Let's see if I can maybe even get this a little bit closer. Let me see what I can do here. Uh, that might be that might be as good as it goes. We'll try, okay. But oh it is beautifully spun. It is a very it's going to make a very pretty pretty yarn. See, I think maybe you can, yeah, there, you're getting a better picture. Now, you see how close my thumbs are? I never work this close together. Never do. I'm even getting my index finger involved here, sort of helping to push forward some of these loose fibers in the background. Again, not something I ever do when I spin. I'm treadling at a much slower more con controlled pace. But I can see that once I got the hang of this fiber that I would begin moving quicker, moving a little faster. It is um, beautiful. I mean, just the feel of it as I'm spinning it, it is absolutely beautiful. So let me get a little bit more on here and then I will Pull the length out and fold it back on itself. Overall, I would say this is a very, would will be a very enjoyable spin once I am more used to it. Um, the fiber itself spins beautifully. It's just mastering the control of the fiber. And I don't have a death grip on here. In my right hand holding the fiber supply is very loose. I'm only even lightly pinching with my thumb to just stop it from flying out of my hands. Okay, that's probably enough to give you an idea of how it is. And once I finally finish this, this will be a very slow spin because I'm learning. 
Um, but once I do finish it, I'll definitely post a picture and maybe just give a little um, video talking about how it went. So what I'm doing now is I am just unrolling a length of fiber and I'm going to take it at one end like this, double it back on itself, and see if I have enough twist. Oh, it's beautiful. I don't know if you can see it that well, but it is definitely a beautiful, uh, I mean, it's just got this shine to it. It probably could use a little bit more twist. I feel like it's a little bit loose on the twist. On this one, I will not be Navajo plying. I just did a video on in plying just a little bit ago. I will not be doing that. I will be, instead of it, just doing a two ply yarn. Um, so what I'm going to do now that I know I need a little bit more twist, I'm going to up my treadling a little bit. Not still, not as fast as I normally do, but a little bit faster than I had been, just to get a little bit more twist in there. And now let me get a little bit more and then we'll check it and we'll see if the twist is, is okay there. I tell you, I've got this stuff is flying away everywhere. I've got a piece of it in my eye right now. I feel like this is a little bit, um, I know you've seen people who've spun Angora while holding the bunny on their lap. <laughs> this kind of feels like that. I've done that once at a fiber show. It was, ugh, it was heaven. Okay, let me pull back now. I'm pulling it back. It's a very strong, look, it, it didn't have as much twist as I wanted, but it's very strong. Okay, so now I'm gonna apply it back on, or fold it back on itself. Much better, I think. Yeah, much better. It's holding together. It's a lot tighter of a twist. I'm gonna see if I can get this up to you. Okay, let me see. See if I can get in here. Mm, I don't think I have the right background for you to see just exactly. Here, let me see if I can get on my jeans here. Just exactly how beautiful this fiber is. I mean, it's going to be a, an absolutely gorgeous yarn. I can see why it's a luxury spin, even aside from just the feel. So anyway, my advice on this one is Definitely try it out. Treat yourself. Mother's Day is coming up. Um, maybe ask one of your kids or your husband or buy it for yourself. You don't have to be a mom to enjoy it. Buy it for yourself. You guys, we are all too busy not to enjoy little things like this. This is something I'm trying to do for myself more often. I'm trying to just find little things like this, like a luxury yarn. And I can tell you, it's not like I'm going to run out and, and buy a $38 camel and silk blend of fiber again anytime soon. But every once in a while, once a year or so, you're worth it. Anyway, I hope that this has been helpful to you. Okay, now I'm just as I'm sitting here talking, I'm feeling like I'm getting the hang of it even more. Anyway, I will stop rambling on now. I hope you found this informative and that you've enjoyed watching this. If you have, please give me a thumbs up. Please like and subscribe. Also, again, if you have any questions, I am always happy to answer questions. I love talking to my other fiberistas, those of us who just love the fiber world. We're a unique tribe and we need to connect more often. So, um, I hope you've enjoyed this. This is Stephanie Nipper and I will see you next time.